Hello everyone, welcome to part 7 of this Godot beginner tutorial series where we are building an endless runner game in Godot Engine. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please do so now and hit that notification bell to get updates in future of any new tutorials. So in this tutorial we're going to start with a spawner scene which is going to help us spawn our various objects like our barrel and our bone. So to do that what we'll do is we'll first of all start off by clicking on this little plus here and using a 2D scene and rename this to Spawner. Let's uh, save that as a scene. So in here we'll save it as a, uh, let's just give it a folder as well. It's maybe it's not an effector, let's create a folder and just call this Spawners and then Spawner.tsen. Now we're going to make this quite a dynamic spawner so we need to add a script so we'll click on this little plus over here and we'll call it spawner.gd but we want to put it into our scripts folder so we'll go up and go to script and spawner.gd and go ahead and create so now what we want to do here is we want to bring in a timer so that we can on a time interval go and spawn some objects. So we'll add a child node by right clicking on our spawner and this will be called timer. And our timer we want to auto start and we'll just leave it like this for now and then we'll connect the signal in a second. So first thing here in our script, what we want to do is just get rid of some of these uh, comments and things and start from scratch here. So we're going to extend node2d, that's fine. And then we need to create an export variable, which will take an array of type packed scene. So this is going to allow us to drag scenes into our inspector and I'm going to just give it a var name of scenes. Then we want to be able to randomly pick one of these scenes. So we're going to use a var random scene and we're going to let that equal a random number generator dot a new. And we want to just have a scene index. So we'll use create a variable called var selected scene index and we'll just default it to zero for now. Save that off and let's go into node over here and connect our timeout signal. So double click over here and connect it to our spawner. And here we'll just create some code to randomly spawn objects. So here we'll just take random scene and we'll just give it a random seed by calling randomize. And then we'll get a selected index for our scene by using random scene dot rand i which is going to return an integer value between zero and the number of scenes we have so we'll do scenes dot size minus one so now that will give us a random scene to pick from our array over here and then we can go and instance this off so for that we'll do a var tmp for a temp scene and we'll use our scenes variable and we'll use our selected scene index and we'll just simply instance that scene and then add it as a child node to our current scene which is our spawner. Save that off and now we can actually go and use this. So in our game we'll go over to our game scene and we'll open our scenes over here, go to spawners and we'll just simply drag in spawner under our game node like so. And when you click on here and you go into the inspector you will see that there's this array size. So if I click on it and I make this two then you'll see we've got these two empty slots. What we can do with this now is we can drag in our barrel and we can also drag in our bone. And that will allow it to spawn these various scenes within our game. So our spawner, we just want to place it at a place where it will spawn. So click on here and then click on 
this little arrow to be able to move it. So let's just see, it's over there. So we want to move this somewhere over here off screen so that everything starts spawning here and moves towards the left. So let's play this, see what it does. So at this point, it's not going to do anything because we don't actually have any movement as of yet uh, for these scenes. So in the next tutorial, we'll start creating the movement of our bone and our barrel so that you can start seeing them move towards the player. So thanks guys, thanks for watching. This is the end of this uh, seventh part of this uh, tutorial series. If you like this video, please like below and comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.